Thank you and welcome to our presentation uh, about um, predicting accidents uh, using graph neural networks, or as we refer to it handily as X index. Uh, <clears throat> so, of course, the first question which arises is why predicting accidents at all? And if you look at the statistics, there are about um, 3000 accidents in Germany, which um, which averages to about eight accidents a day and uh, 3000 uh, fatal accidents in, in Germany, sorry, um, 12, and 12,000 accidents in, in Berlin alone every year. So, and yet Google does not offer any sort of uh, uh, routing suggestion that it based on traffic security considerations. Uh, and to our knowledge, also no other tool is out there which, which does this effectively. So our project aims or addresses this gap. And of course, we don't want to wait for for accidents to happen. So what we what what we are trying to do is we try to abstract uh, features and characteristics of neighborhoods or of streets and junctions, and trying to, uh, to, to trying to impose these uh, these learnings from the from these uh, neighborhoods onto different neighborhoods, and therefore um, basically forecast the accidents before they happen. So. And we have um, um, quite a, a, an array of data at our hands. So first of all, we use OSM and X uh, data, so OpenStreetMap data, which gives us uh, the data at the streets and the junctions, but it also includes a highway type or maximum speed and a lot of other useful information that we can include. Secondly, it's the accident data itself. So the uh, this Deutsche Bundesamt für Statistik is providing this for entire Germany as well as for Berlin. And this constitutes also our target variable, which is accidents and years uh, per year on a given node or given edge, uh, as well as a lot of more information out there, uh, which we can which can then be used for future iterations. And thirdly, uh, we have also um, global um, global features such as population density or area use. And this is this is from a Berlin Open Data platform. And this also has a pretty high granularity of about 26,000 uh, units in, in all of Berlin. Okay, yeah. So these were basically those three types of uh, data sources uh, for the online audience out there. So always in X, the accident data and the population density. And these, uh, these three data sources also informed our choice uh, of algorithm that we used in order to, to, to analyze and to predict um, the accidents, which is graph neural networks. So um, graph neural networks in, uh, neatly incorporates these three levels of information. And um, many of you probably are not so familiar with uh, graph neural networks since it is not really common or used yet. Uh, it suffice to say here at this point that it is uh, similar to convolutional networks, mm -hmm. convolutional neural net net networks, but the relational dependencies are explicitly modeled and not simply assumed as it is the case for convolutional networks. And this is uh, this creates a so-called inductive uh, relational bias, which captures these dependencies between nodes and edges by design. And within this framework, our architecture of choice is the generalized message passing, uh, but um, going into the theoretical underpinnings of this concept would easily exceed the scope of this uh, presentation. And with that, I want to give to uh, give over to Anand, who is going to get more into the technical details of our approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. So uh, as you can expect, the uh, road network can be easily uh, uh, visualized as a graph where the junctions are the nodes and the uh, streets are the edges. But uh, if you want to do uh, a graph level prediction, like at a node and or at a junction or at a on a street, what is a, what are the number of accidents when this is a really huge graph? Like for example, for Berlin itself, there are like 27 odd thousand nodes and 70 odd thousand streets. And it's, it's a, you, the monster <laughs> graph that you see is very difficult for uh, uh, the model to handle. So uh, the strategy they, that we used uh, for to solve this problem is uh, we came up with the concept of neighborhood uh, for a, uh, for the graph. So what does it mean? So we randomly select uh, first nodes on the graph, which are essentially the junctions where the streets meet. Then we, uh, with respect to each of these nodes, we create two hop neighborhoods. What do we mean by two hop neighborhood? If this is the ra randomly chosen node, 
then we take the 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 immediate first uh, uh, junction then the second junction that would be the two hop neighborhood and all the streets joining them and this would be the subgraph of your big graph and on this graph on this neighborhood we then randomly choose a node and an and an adjacent edge so we get a triplet we get a neighborhood we get a node and an edge and we extract the index of this node and the edge and convert it to a, a tensor form and feed it to the data so our task then becomes uh, predicting a accident frequency or accident number of accidents at a node and at a given age in the neighborhood with respect to the neighborhood so that's our triplet so we train our model on solving the the this problem and then this is it easy to handle because as you can see the this is one example so the earlier you saw the the monster graph and this is a a small little cute puppy which comes out of it and it's like uh, this neighborhood generated with respect to this node like 3469 and the red uh, age and the node that you see is that's where we do our prediction task and as you expect this node and age can appear in several such neighborhoods so what we do is we create lot of such data samples so in to trigger to create a neighborhood is basically a node and there are only 20 25000 odd nodes so we create uh, thousands of such neighborhoods which takes care of this problem so as you can see the same node and edge can appear in several neighborhoods and we do take care we do consider this while doing prediction what we do at a global level or, or to, to predict uh, accidents on the street we segment the streets into a node and edge and we consider something called as a nest of neighborhoods around this node and edge and we do the prediction with respect to each of these and then we just average so we try to in capture the neighborhood effect on the node and the edge and then we do the prediction for the entire berlin and uh, so the pipeline how we how we achieve this is in the following way so this is the graph where we have the this is the graph where we have the 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 blue graph g is the osnmx graph where it has all the road features the that comes with the data and then we separate the accident data we split the accident data uh, we tried several strategies but then we uh, uh, settled with splitting the accident data with respect to the years and then we put this data on the graph how do we put it like we consider the closest uh, uh, edge or the closest node we first assign it to the node we consider the radius and if once we assign that then we assign it to the rest of the accident to the node to the edges so once we create these sets then we for the uh, categorical data we encode and we also assign global features we create these neighborhoods out of it global features so we have a neighborhood so we consider the population density the area uses for this neighborhood and all of this categorical data is encoded and we use one hot encoding and also the scalar uh, uh, the scalar data form we uh, uh, with respect to the training data we scale it and we apply those to the validation and the uh, test data as well and then once we have this data set we feed it to a model and that's where then it considers all the neighborhoods the triplets and uh, solves a problem of finding a accident frequency at a given node and the given edge and in the uh, in the edge so that's our model and uh, now onur will uh, explain how those results look like thank you very much thanks um hi everyone um so uh, in our search for uh, uh, the best model um we went through some um, uh, improvement steps uh, some of these might be familiar for those who played with um, machine learning models like feature selection chain validation test splitting different strategies in there um and model fine tuning but we also had to deal with those those maybe less familiar things like um uh, playing with the node reduce to assign the accidents or um, the number of hops to uh, create the neighborhoods um, and so on and uh, our best models um uh, the training of our best model uh, looked like this um in this one uh, we achieved the uh, uh, the best score we had uh, at the 14th epoch uh, in this and then at this uh, the validation mean absolute error was um around uh, 0.15 accidents per year so this um it's 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 kind of difficult to evaluate whether this is a good or 
nuts because uh, like the standards don't seem to exist. I mean, for this kind of task um, or this kind of um, um, approach, um, but just uh, thinking about this, you know, naturally about this unit of, you know, 0 0.15 excellence per year is our mean absolute error. This is probably not bad. I mean, if the um, accident is one per year in the street, our model is predicting maybe 0 0.85 or 1.15. So in this regard, um, we think uh, this is probably not uh, uh, very bad. Um, and then uh, once we produce this um, best model, um, we, um, as an mentioned, we produced predictions for the all the streets um, in Berlin. Yeah. How do we zoom in here? Yeah, so this is the, like, you can zoom in and analyze, like, what's going on. So here, the uh, the blue dots are, are the real accidents that happens uh, in our data set. Okay. <laughs> and uh, these uh, red um, clouds are uh, our model's predictions. Um, the, the heavier the cloud, the higher the prediction. And, um, like, when you look into this uh, map, uh, like, what you see is in really, indeed, in areas where um, the, there's a lot of excellence, you also see these uh, heavier clouds. But uh, in other areas uh, where excellence are not so many, so... Uh, much happening. We don't see the clouds. I mean, this is a nice uh, macroscopic pattern. This um, model seems to be able to capture, but also in some areas, uh, we don't see any accidents, but some clouds. But actually, we are happy about this result because, I mean, based on four years of data set, an accident may not have happened on a given street, but this doesn't mean that uh, we don't expect any accidents there. Um, and actually, as Dan Jan mentioned, uh, we think then our model might be predicting accidents before actually they happen. Uh, and therefore, maybe it's producing value. Another uh, prediction task uh, we had, uh, I'll just go to another tab after this, is um, uh, predicting the number of accidents, cumulative number of accidents along a given route. Uh, and again, uh, that can do this. Uh, it takes a while to prepare the environment. In the meanwhile, I can show also this more interactive version. So like uh, this is, a, we are still working on putting it, actually deploying this version of the uh, prediction. Like this one allows, uh, like when you go on the nodes, uh, it predicts the number of accidents in the next edge. So this is uh, like, based on this, you can actually kind of decide, okay, what which segments of your routes is maybe more dangerous than the others. In the meanwhile, probably our web app might be ready. Yeah, it's ready. So. Uh, these are just some, so this is like uh, an environment where you can put in two uh, um, addresses um, and here are the default ones. And then once you say calculate routes, uh, it will first identify the coordinates of this address, find the nearest nodes, and then between the ne these nearest nodes, it will find the shortest path. And along the shortest path, it will calculate the cumulative number of accidents as predicted um, by our model. And uh, so this is, in this in this case, this Ice Leben Strasse is our beloved DSR. And then uh, the this Freezy Strasse is almost where we are. And as you see from this, ah, like this Mac is, yeah. All right, so uh, so between these, uh, these two nodes, uh, uh, the predicted number of total accidents per year is about 27.50, 52. Um, in a further iteration, what we are uh, one thing we are thinking of doing is maybe uh, consider two alternative routes, and then in these two alternative routes, we may have different number of accidents, and based on this, we can choose our routes. Like for instance, if you want to go to a bike ride with our kids, uh, the routes we are choosing might be different than when we are going alone in a car. Uh, wrapping up, um, so we created a new tool that can be used to estimate um, uh, accident frequencies um, um, and. Like, it, it really seems to be a new tool because, I mean, although, like, as you mentioned, um, we really need this, this, uh, like, even Google Maps doesn't provide this. And, like, from a quick look, to be honest, uh, it didn't look like there are tools out there, at least in production. There's research papers, but um, um, it, it doesn't seem like there are available tools in production. Um one thing we learned uh, out of this uh, project is uh, that uh, GNNs are very flexible. Uh, you can apply GNNs to very different kinds of uh, problems. The original model that we used here was actually applied on a molecule classification problem. 
right? Uh, but uh, they are also not very easy to deal with uh, because, for instance, uh, th there are no pre-trained models you can just download and uh, fine-tune and apply to your problem. Or uh, there are many open design uh, decisions and then there's like a very sneaky, like uh, <laughs> potential data leaks that are not easy to identify, such as um, in your um, data set, um, there might be some overlaps between the neighborhoods. Is it okay or not? I mean, these are not like um, things we know just um, um, from the beginning. Um, and finally, uh, like this is a point um, I am uh, a bit hesitant to say, but then it like from a first look, it seemed like we actually get a somewhat better performance with an XG boost on a tabularized uh, data. Uh, but uh, these uh, com this comparison is not very conclusive because uh, it's very difficult to come up with two equivalent uh, models. Um, but yeah, the first results looked as if the XG boost is uh, really maybe better. Uh, what we can draw from this is perhaps the actually the inherent network characteristics are not very important after all uh, for predicting the number of accidents. Uh, but what's also very possible is that we need to put a bit more effort to improve our GNN model by, for instance, uh, considering different model architectures or um, a larger da uh, training data set. And uh, well, this is all we have to say. Uh, thank you all for your attention. We also would like to thank our mentor, um, Stanislav Chekmanov, uh, who helped us um, at an earlier stage before he had to leave for a vacation that he earlier planned. Um, and please do find us uh, on LinkedIn. We are happy to connect. And thank you again.